Disgusting. Trash. Horrible. Useless. Godly. Alright, so how's this going to work? Well, I'm going to be going through every single one of the 104 artifacts in the Artifact Journal and assigning them an F to an S rating. An F meaning it's a pile of steaming garbage, an S meaning that it's rigged and you should be using it. So, before we start, I want to go over three caveats. Number one, these are PvP ratings. Some of these artifacts are really good in PvE, but they suck at PvP. I do not care about PvE artifacts because PvE at a certain point becomes really easy. It almost doesn't matter what artifact you run unless you're really trying to min-max with one-shot teams. Number two, these are lightning reviews. There's a million situations to cover for each artifact, but I don't want this video to be nine hours long, so I'm not going to get into every single possible use case. I'm going into the mainstream use case and assigning a rating based on that. And number three, the most important one, these are my opinions. You may be using some of the artifacts that I consider to be bad, and it might work for your team, but I'm basing this on my experience in Champion and Legend Arena and Guild Wars and how annoying I find these artifacts when I run up against them. So generally, my opinion should be about 80 to 90% right, but I'm sure I'm missing some use cases where they're potentially very powerful with a certain hero, but uh, I don't really care about that. So if you disagree vehemently about one of my ratings, just leave a comment below and tell me why I'm an asshole, and then let's let the community discuss it. Now, without further ado, let's begin. Artifact number one, Abyssal Crown. This artifact is annoying as all hell. It has a 24% chance of stunning an enemy for one turn, and it procs off AoE. So if you've ever versed the Dizzy and she stuns your whole team, she's probably using Abyssal Crown, or definitely using Abyssal Crown. So this one's annoying as shit, so I give it an S. Etika's Scepter. At max, 50% chance to decrease skill cooldown by one turn at the beginning of the turn. This has some situational uses. People used to run Silverblade Aramintha with this, but I don't like it because 50% isn't enough to build a team around, although when it does proc, it's pretty good. I'll give this a C. Time Matter. Not bad in PvE, and it has some limited uses. Some people use this with Ludwig, but again, it requires you to kill someone to get the bonus, and that's a pretty hard condition to fulfill. I give this a C-. Chatty. This is uh, the Cirilla artifact. Gives you a barrier when you're being attacked and your health goes below 50%. I'd say this is pretty garbage. I see some people use it with like Champ Zerato, but too situational. I give this one a D. Necro and Undyne. I think this artifact is really good, but I don't see it very often. I don't have it because I joined after Dizzy. It increases the caster's combat readiness by 20% after an AoE attack. This is very powerful with Celestial Mercedes, I believe, because it gives her an extra turn, basically. But I'd say it's very rare. I don't run into this artifact a lot. And uh, yeah, if you have it, it's pretty powerful. I'll give this one a B+. Spirit's Breath. At max, 100% chance to decrease skill cooldowns by one turn. It's pretty powerful with certain heroes like Alots, but the problem is Alots is usually carrying Taga Hells anyway, but this is situationally useful. I'll give this a B plus as well. Dignus Orb, Vivian Artifact. It seems pretty good. 120% of attack for two turns as a barrier is pretty strong barrier, but the problem is I've never run into this, so I'm assuming the community thinks it's not very good. I think this is another artifact where situationally on certain builds it may be powerful, but I think the use case is too limited. I'll give this one a C+. Bloody Rose. This is the Melissa artifact. Increases effectiveness by 60% on a single attack. This is horrible, I think, because it's only on a single attack. On very specific heroes, it might might have some use. But uh, again, I think in general, there's something better than this. So I'm going to give this one a D. Holy Sacrifice. This one is situationally useful. So a lot of crowds run this one because they'll die and then they'll revive with 25% life and then be in a prime position to one-shot someone with their S3. I say, I don't only really see this in Arena, but in Guild Wars with Krows, I, I'd say it's on like 80% of Krows. Uh, it, pretty much if you attack it and you could tell he's not using Aureus, 
he's probably using holy sacrifice so this is probably an s on crow on average i'd give this like a b plus because you wouldn't really use it on any other knight elbris ritual sword this is like a s squared uh this artifact is rigged as hell it says 20 percent, but really it's like 162 percent every single time i attack anyone who's running a charles has elbris and i'd say at least 60 percent of fccs have elbris i mean i think it feels like more than 20 percent because i think it's additive when there's more than one ally being attacked so basically you're countering all the time if you have elbris this one is a hard s this is a god tier artifact in pvp noble oath i actually like this artifact in guild wars i think it's very powerful almost nobody runs this thing but a hundred percent defense and effective effect resist uh that's really powerful so um the problem is knights have other really good artifacts so i think this is why it's never used i'd say it's quite situational but i still think i'd give it like a, a b it's usable in the right situation Justice for All. Now this one does pop up in top end guild wars occasionally. Um, the thing is I don't really like RNG artifacts that much so you have a 100% chance to get two random buffs and depending on what buff you get I mean they're all pretty good but I mean you don't really need some of these they're not going to help that much. Again the problem isn't so much that this artifact is bad it's that there are better options for knights. I'll give this one like a C plus but again I do see it used. Not in arena though. Sword of Ezra, well, it does nothing in PvP, so I give this like an F minus. This is completely useless. Bastion of Perlutia, or Perlutia, I don't know how to say that damn thing. Anyways, this is a really good artifact. People were kind of ragging on it in the beginning, but uh, in high end arena, you actually see a lot of people use this primarily to protect like Arbiter Vildreds and seasides uh 30 percent of the caster's max health that's a pretty thick barrier if you put it on a knight with like 20k life like that's a huge ass barrier and it really prevents your dps from being one-shotted i give this one an a plus sigurd scythe this artifact is amazing uh obviously every single ml ken in the game basically runs this it heals him to full every single attack and also in guild wars it's really annoying on heroes like assassin cartuja or really any warrior because if you get stuck in like a 2v1 or a 1v1 situation for warrior that's using this pretty much it's an auto loss because you'll never do enough damage to out heal him this one is also a hard s the Randall, this artifact is also great, really powerful on heroes like Corvus and especially Assassin Cartuja, because every time he gets a turn, it's a guaranteed miss, so when you get stuck 1v1 with an A-cart, pretty much he has a 100% chance to dodge if he keeps turn cutting. This one is also an S in my view, although I'd say it's a lot stronger in Guild Wars and Arena. Uberius Tooth. This used to be like the iconic artifact for every warrior. Um, it does do a lot of damage, a lot of additional damage. I'd say I don't see it used that often anymore, but it is a huge power spike if you're just going for a pure D DPS warrior. So uh, the only main problem with it is it only works on single attacks, so it's not going to work on cleave teams. But if you're trying to build a really strong single target DPS warrior, I'd say this is a pretty good artifact. But I'd say it's useless in Guild... Not Guild Wars. It's godly in Guild Wars, useless in Arena. You're not really building Arena teams typically around single attacks. I give this one an A. Border Coin. I mean, at max, if you actually stack it up to three times, this is like one of the biggest attack boosts you could get in the game. But you're never going to do this, so this artifact is completely useless. I give this like a D. Actually, I'd give it an F. I mean, if you stack it, like in PvE, it's pretty good, but for PvP, it's an F. Junkyard Dog. So I never see this artifact. I don't think a lot of people have it. Um, again, 50% chance. It's unreliable. I don't really like that that much, and that's at max. But uh, it does do a lot of damage. Like, if you put it on, like, a Gunther or something, like someone with a lot of attack, because burns are based on attack, it's a lot of extra DPS. But again, you have to use your basic skills, so it's kind of rng plus a strict condition uh so i'd say it's very limited in its use i give this one like a c minus creation and destruction this artifact's a piece of shit like uh so 20 percent chance for skill cooldown not to occur so it's kind of trolly because if you put it on something like a dark corvus it's hilarious because uh 
you can use his S3 twice. So it's like a fun artifact in the sense that if it procs, you could really troll someone with it. But I mean, 20% is not good. You're not going to build a team around 20% and hope that you win 20% of the time. That's idiotic. I give this one a D. Draco Plate, I love this artifact. So at max, it increases critical hit damage by 30% and basically gives you Adamant Shield where it reduces crit hit damage that you take. Um, I'd say this is a very powerful artifact for Judge Key. Say I run it. It's one of the most powerful cleaving artifacts. Um, so I'd say this is like a, uh, I don't know if it's an S. I'd give it like a A++. So it's a very powerful artifact. Um, yeah, although it's hard to get. Remember, this is a limited artifact. Another thing to say about this, because people get confused, this is basically 30% on top of your crit damage stat. It's not multiplying your criticals by 30% total. So it's not like portrait, so don't get that confused. Rihanna and Luciana. So this is kind of weird because I just said I don't like low chance artifacts, but this one seems to proc all the goddamn time. And extra turns are super powerful in this game. So basically in Guild Wars, if you're versing like an A. coli and RNL procs, you lose the game. So I'd say that this is an S, even though it's a low percent chance to proc, because it's kind of like if it procs, you win. Wind Rider. Everyone remembers this because it used to be super rigged with Sez, where he'd one-shot your entire team with one S3. Uh, this is still pretty good. I mean, increase attack by 60% is ridiculous. Um, the problem is the condition is you have to defeat an enemy, so it's not going to proc all that often. You need to run it on a thief that basically can reliably one-shot someone, like a Sid or really just a Sid, I would think. Um, or E. coli. The problem is, if you put this on defense, it's useless because they're going to bring some kind of bait and make sure they don't get one-shotted. On offense, you could theoretically use this because you should be able to know if you can wipe out someone in one hit or not. I give this one like a B plus. Alexa's Basket. This is pretty trolly. I mean, at max it's 40%, but it's really like a 60% chance to get one of the two buffs. Uh, primarily seen on Arbiter Vildreds. Keep in mind this is increased attack greater, so if it does proc, it's 75% extra attack and you're going to blow people the fuck up. So really it's only used on like Arbiter Vildred mostly, but if it does proc, you lose the game. The problem is Moonlight Dreamblade, in my opinion, is better in every way, and it's more reliable. But uh, this is still pretty good. I give this one an A. Violet Talisman. Ugh. Just don't use it. It's garbage. F. Torn Sleeve. This is kind of like that other burn artifact, except it's 100%. Um, I don't see anyone ever, ever use this, but I mean, eh, I guess for biking it might be pretty good, maybe, but I'd rather still use RNL. I'll give this one like a C. Also, bleeds aren't that useful in PvP. Rod of Amaryllis. This one is a... Quadruple S. In Guild Wars, this is god tier. It makes people that don't really heal much, like A Momo and DN, like beast mode healers, heals the ally for 24% after using any non attack skill. This artifact is godly. If you don't have it, buy it from the powder shop anytime it shows up. It, you really need this for Guild Wars. Shimadra Staff. Everyone talks about this. I mean, the problem with this one is not so much that it's not good, it's that unless you're running multiple Soul Weavers, you're not going to run just Shimadras with one Soul Weaver. So really it's hard to use unless you're running some kind of like triple Soul Weaver team, which would be really strange in PvP. Uh, but it's certainly not bad, so I'll give this one like a, a C plus maybe, but I gotta say I almost never see this in PvP. Celestine. This is kind of like Rot. I think it's a little bit worse. Um, you see it on people with like healers that don't have many moves like maybe like a ml basar but even he doesn't really use this that much but it's kind of like a rod of amaryllis that only works when you use a basic skill i give this one like a i'll give it an a even though honestly i don't see it that much idols cheer this one is really freaking good and for people who are still in like you know like masters and gold 
idols cheer angelicas is probably the bane of your existence i remember when i first started the game i used to hate seeing angelicas of idols cheer because basically i couldn't kill them like i'd be in arena 4v1 in an angelica and i'll just yield because she never dies in high-end pvp i'll just tell you this artifact basically disappears there's some niche use cases where people will run triple idols cheer and basically keep boosting one person but uh i give this one like an A minus in high end PvP in like Golden Masters, it's probably like a S S S S S. But later on, I gotta say this artifact kind of disappears, but I'll still give it an A minus. Stella Harpa, this is brand new. Um, it remains to be seen how good it is. I kind of like it because there's so many bazaars out there. If you build some kind of counter soul weaver, I mean. Maybe it'll be useful. The problem is it's only 60% chance and it's only one debuff. If it was like, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll give this one a B, but it might be worse. I mean, 60% is kind of unreliable, but as we all know on defenses, the chance of stuff proccing is quadrupled, so who knows. Bloodstone is pretty good in PvE. and PvP, I almost never see it. I can't remember the last time I saw this artifact. It is kind of trolly, like people used to run Bologna's with this and kind of try and make like unkillable Bologna's. But uh, yeah, I mean, I never see this. I'll give this one a C. Song of Stars is actually a really good artifact, but in PvP it's pretty useless. I don't see anyone use it. Maybe like an Aseria would use it or something. I mean, I, not even that. I, never mind, Aseria would never use this. I don't know. So this, maybe like a Shuri that you're bringing just for a speed imprint. I'll give this one like a a D plus. I mean, there might be some limited use for it if you want them to be targeted. And PVE really good though. This one is like a like an Exorcist Tomfa basically, where it, except they don't need to be under fifty percent. Uh, the problem is it only works on AOE attacks. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, if you don't have a better artifact, I'd give this like a B plus. Uh, Sixteen percent damage is pretty good. This is like a, a negative F. This is the worst, one of the worst PvP artifacts in the game, including the one where it doesn't even do anything in PvP. This makes me cry every time I pull it, and uh, basically just fodder it immediately. It's a pile of garbage. Sword of Judgment. This is basically like Dust Devil for Rangers. I mean, it's not so much that it's a bad artifact, but there's just something better to use. That's the main problem with it. And I almost never see anyone use this. I'll give this one like a C. Rhyngar Special Drink. I pitied Seaside and I still didn't get this artifact. And it's one of my biggest regrets. This thing is broken as all hell. Like when you get countered or hit by a Seaside and you see that second tick afterwards that seems to one-shot your team, that's Rhyngar's. I mean, if you have it, buy the stupid bottle things and five-star limit break it and max it because... And part of this additional damage ignores defense. That's also the other reason why it seems like the second tick is so strong sometimes if you're running a very high defense team. This one is a definite S. Proof of Valor, I mean, um, this is really good too. You see it very often in high-end arena like Ruel's use it a lot and stuff, although a lot of people recently have switched over to Water's Origin. It's still really good. I mean, 30% is a huge amount of damage mitigation um i'll give this like an a plus but to be honest and people also seem to run it on c sides i don't like that but i'll give this one an a plus even though i feel like it's fallen out of favor recently all right that's all the five star artifacts now let's go into four star artifacts taga hells this thing is broken as all hell at max you get 20 souls it sets up ridiculous comps like judge kise cleaves this is like a S, 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 S. This is godly. Get as many of them as you can. You want to build like two, maybe even three of these damn things. Of course, I never get any. Kaladra, really good in PvE. In PvP, I mean, the condition's kind of strict, but usable if you really want to build like a hard mage nuker. But there's not that many of those that people actually use in PvP. Um, but I mean, if you're using a Basar, then you could guarantee that they're debuffed. But again, Taga Hells exist, so really you'd probably rather bring a Taga Hells. I'll still give this like a B. Sierra Ren is annoying as hell. Like, if you have something like a Silverblade, Araminta, or a Dizzy, I mean, 
this control people really hard if it keeps putting them to sleep although it is rng based but no matter what all these debuffs are good i'd give this a solid a this thing is one of the most annoying artifacts in the game god tier for champ serato and dizzy counter dizzies that have this are extremely annoying because they repeatedly debuff your team and then put their s3 debuffs on you and you know it's a super annoying i give this one an s for pvp uh, I don't think I've ever seen... Okay, so this is a F- for PvP because it doesn't do anything for PvP. I don't think I've seen this before either, but it's useless. F. This is probably the most common knight PvP artifact in the game. I'm just going to go ahead and give it an S, but there is a condition to that because, you know, people want to max this. The problem with Aureus is that against cleave teams it makes your tank really squishy because the damage it absorbs is not mitigated. So if it's hitting like a really squishy cleaver on your team, they take 20% of that full damage. So that's why you see your tankiest crowd or whatever running this sometimes get hit more than anyone else on your team because it absorbs so much damage. So sometimes this makes your tank at one shot. But still, it's a really good artifact, mitigates a lot of damage, S. Adam and Shield. Decreases crit hit damage by 16%, does stack with Aureus. I'm also going to give this an S. I mean, that's a really good amount of damage mitigation, and it gives it to your whole team. Very powerful artifact. Hillog Lance used to be really popular back in the day, still has its uses. The main problem is it's only affected by single attacks. I'd say better in Guild Wars and Arena. Arena people are really usually just cleaving the crap out of each other. I give this one a B. L's Fist. I mean, this is pretty good, but again, like, I don't like health decreasing conditions unless you have someone extremely tanky that can actually survive at below 50% health. Maybe like an A Ravi or something like that. And also, you have to choose between this and Sigurd Scythe. I'd almost rather always pick Sigurd Scythe, but could be good for something like an A card or something like that. The damage boost and the speed boost is immense. In Guild Wars, I'll give it like a B+. Plus. In Arena, just useless. Hellcutter, I see people use this. It's pretty common, actually. I wouldn't say common, but you'll see it every once in a while. I don't think it's that great. I mean, um, it stacks pretty fast if you're on a slow warrior, but there's just a better artifact for probably every single warrior out there. I'll give this a B-. Strac Gauntlet. So, this is pretty good i mean this used to be like a very popular artifact um situationally in guild wars i mean people put on like d corves or ml kens or something but again i'd rather use sigurd scythe so i'd say this is like a, a b plus if you're trying to build a warrior with a lot of effect resist to troll people this is definitely useful crimson seed this is a really annoying artifact a lot of apocalypse ravis run this um, it gives you a chance to dispel one debuff when attacked. It can only proc once per turn, though. But this kind of, you know, replaces the need for effect resist because you're basically dispelling everything that's put on you anyway. I give this like an A plus for PvP. Ugh, this is the most horrible artifact in the game. I hate this artifact, and it single-handedly makes a three-star artifact one of the best artifacts in the game. This is 20%. It's always on Arbiter Vildred, and if you're running a cleave team, basically what this means is if this procs, you lose. It's the most annoying artifact in the game. It also stacks additively with other evasion, which is weird. It's not like a separate calculation. If you have 50% evasion and you have Moonlight, it's 70% evasion. So, I mean, this is a S square. This is a godly artifact on defense especially. It's super annoying to deal with, and uh, I hate this artifact. I hope it's removed from the game, but it's an S. Elia's Light Knife. So this is pretty good. Um, it's kind of like a ghetto defense break. Uh, the condition is that they're not at max health, but that's not too hard to do if you have something like a Basar initiating. I give this like a B. I mean, um, it's used pretty often on BBK. Dust Devil, great artifact, better than the Ranger version because it's 30%. Um, not really seen very often in PvP except on k -Rons, like counter k -Rons sometimes even. Uh, but it's certainly not a bad artifact, it's just usually Thieves will use RNL. I give this one a B. 
I've literally never seen this before in my life. Don't even know how you get it. It's completely useless. F. Ah. Um, this one seems like it's usable. The problem is Moonlight Dreamblade exists, so there's really no ever reason to ever use this. I'll give it a D minus. This artifact is super common, super, super, super common in high-end arena. The main thing is the combat readiness boost. 20% is huge, and it also heals them. So you, people build tanky soul weavers and hope that you hit them hard, so it boosts them to the front and they could cleanse and heal people. This is a definite S. Great artifact. This artifact is also like an iconic artifact. Everyone used to run this. 100% chance to dispel one debuff, and it also has an RNG element where you're like, I hope it really debuffs the stun or whatever. This, I don't think, deserves an S anymore. I'll give it an A um, because usually against Cleave Team in Arena, I'd give it like a B. In Guild Wars, it's still probably like an A, maybe even an S. Uh, but in Arena, I, no one uses this in Arena anymore. Um, but still, it deserves an A, and it's iconic. Magahara's Tome. This is a very powerful artifact. The problem is it kind of competes with Rod sometimes, like especially if A Momo do you use Magahara's or Rod. I still think Rod is better, but 30% when you're using a non-attack skill, that's a huge, huge, huge CR boost. I think no matter what, this still deserves an S. Great artifact. Build one up. Um, this is just not reliable enough for PvP. I mean, 14% chance of dual attack may be usable in Guild Wars. I'd say I very rarely see this. I don't think it deserves an F, but I'll give it like a D+. No one uses that. Oh, wrong artifact. Sasha Ithani's. I mean, this used to be very popular. Again, I don't like it very much because the condition is too strict. It's only when an enemy is defeated. Used to be popular. I'm going to say this is a C. Rosa Hargana, I'd say this is really good, um, not so much because of the dual attack chance, but because of the increased attack when it's not the caster's turn. Basically, if you don't have Rhinegars, this is Seaside's best artifact, and Seaside is everywhere, so by extension, this artifact becomes good. On other ranges, probably not so good, but because Seaside exists, this is probably an A. Ambrot, I mean, this is kind of like a stronger version of that crappy 3-star artifact. I mean, if most teams aren't built around their basic skill. I mean, it is a big boost. I'll give it like a D because situationally on certain heroes it might be good, but I don't think I've ever seen that either. This is a uh, garbage F. I don't even know what the hell this is, but it's like a really horrible Shimadras F. This, I'm so mad I don't have this. This was kind of like part of the Guilty Gear event. It's basically Exorcist Tanfa with, you know, more damage. It's a little bit better than Exorcist Tanfa. Pretty much every hard-hitting cleaver in the game can utilize this. This is a definite S. This is a... Uh, the bonus is pretty good. Effectiveness and effect resistance. The problem is that's 10% at max and you're wasting an artifact slot. Utterly useless, F. Um, unless you're farming arena for experience, this is not useful, F. Um, yeah. Some people do use this. Usually they'll throw this on like a speed imprint person or something. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, but really you should be building your characters to not need this. I'll give this like a C plus if you really need crit hit chance on your team, but um, there's so many good artifacts in the game it feels bad to waste a slot just for crit chance. Um, again, this has like the problem of good bonuses, but the rate is too low. If this was like 15%, it might be a really good artifact. 5% is nothing, so F. And that's all the 4-star artifacts. Now we go to the 3-star artifacts, and surprisingly some of them are good, although most of them, unsurprisingly, will be useless. Grail of Blood. It's just trash. F. Egg of Delusion for PvP. I mean, for PvE, if you're a new player, it's pretty good. Throw it on Angelica and you can tank Wyvern on it if your gear is garbage. For PvP, especially high in PvP, F. Useless. 
This one in Arena is not too good, but for Guild Wars, pretty powerful. I mean, people even put this on like Dark Corvus sometimes. 40% chance is a decent proc rate and it reduces your, all your cooldowns by one turn. I'd say this is a B minus, situationally useful. This is kind of like a, a crappier version of Ambrot. Again, it's not so much that's terrible, might even be good at PvE, but there's just better artifacts. I'll give it like a D plus. This people used to actually use a lot, um, but I mean, you have to attack 10 times for a 20% speed boost. Outside of Guild Wars and Arena, you're not getting 10 turns, so I give this a D. This uh, is horrendous, completely useless in PvP, F. Uh, too unreliable, F. Um... Yeah, 20% chance, no, F. So surprisingly, you know, it's the funny thing. You see that Melissa artifact, it's 30, 60% on a single attack. This is any attack and it's 25, 50. Like, why is there a 5-star artifact that's worse than a 3-star artifact? I'd rather have it affect AoE than have an extra 10%. So this is really good. Like, if you... And the problem is it competes with the artifact slot. Like if you're using Bassar, you'd probably rather use Taga Hells. Um, actually, you definitely use Taga Hells because it basically makes it a million effectiveness. But uh, for certain heroes, like maybe if you have like an AoE defense breaker, this is situationally useful. I'll give this like an A. Um, yeah, so I, Guild Wars, kind of usable. Again, I barely ever see it, but the bonus isn't bad. I'll give it a C in Guild Wars, maybe. Uh, no, it's garbage. Nah, it's not an F. I'll give it a D minus. Devil's Brand, horrible, just horrible. F. Throw it out. Um, yeah, this is like an F minus minus. This is disgusting. Don't ever run that in PvP. Uh, also horrific. F. F, just fodder it. I mean, you know, it does give 30% crit, but still, like, if you're relying on this, you're probably crappy at PvP anyway. It doesn't matter what artifact you use. F, don't ever use it. Exorcist Tanfa. Now, this is a 3-star artifact that's as good as many 4- or 5-star artifacts. So if you have Portrait, there's no reason to use this because it has a higher bonus. But if you don't have Portrait... Exorcist Tanfa is probably one of the biggest damage spikes you could get for a cleaver. This is an A. It would be an S if Portrait didn't exist. Daydream Joker. This is an F in PvP. So this artifact is iconic. In PvE, this is like a quadruple S. But in PvP, I mean, the most life anyone will ever have is like, I don't know, 30, maybe 40k. So it's not that much of a damage bump. Like, you just use Uberius 2 for something like this isn't helpful in PvP. So F for PvP, but yes, I admit it's godly in PvE. Um, this is a pretty fun effect, but 8% chance, useless F. Uh, I actually like this bonus, but Proof of Valor exists, so this is... I'll give it a D. This is pretty trolly, and I don't think it has the limitation of Crimson Sea where it only procs once per turn, I'm not sure. But uh, I actually see people run this sometimes on like Fighter Maya and Decorb. In Guild Wars, this is situationally useful. I'll give this like a B-. minus. Forest Totem is horrible. I have a million of these. Uh, somehow my account is written. I get a thousand of these every day. Garbage. Throw it out. F. And Oath Key. So this artifact wouldn't be so good except goddamn Moonlight Dreamblade exists. You'll notice that Moonlight Dreamblade max is 20% and this is 20%, so it cancels it out. So this would not be a very good artifact if Moonlight Dreamblade didn't exist, but it does. So this is the way to counter all the Arbiters and high ratings that are running that stupid-ass artifact. So this is an A. Now... If they're not running Moonlight Dreamblade, it's an F because it's useless, um, unless you have Elemental Disadvantage. But because Arbiters are in, I'd say, 80% of teams in Champ and above, this becomes an A artifact. Now, for all of these artifacts, they're F minus minus minus. They're all completely useless. If you're using any of these, you're a moron. They, they suck. There's no reason to even click on them. 
All right, so that concludes my artifact reviews. Again, these are all my opinions, so if you disagree with anything, don't feel bad. If you disagree vehemently with anything, just leave it in the comments and tell me the situation or reason why that artifact is good that I said was a piece of garbage. But otherwise, I hope this helped you guys kind of pick out what artifacts you might want to use on your own heroes in Arena or Guild Wars. And uh, I hope this was helpful to you guys. If you have any other video ideas, just let me know, like and subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day, guys.